<clears throat> Thank you, Brother. Well spoken. I appreciate much, much more all the time of these younger preachers and their ability to speak directly uh, to the text, to the subject. Uh, Brother Jonathan and Brother Matt both uh, do an excellent job of, uh, of uh, expounding precisely what the text says and uh, not being distracted or detoured to other things. The uh, one statement that he said that took me years to see that I see more clearly and am seeing more clearly now is one he said toward the latter half of his message that faith is primarily for obtaining and not for abstaining. <laughs> well, when you see that, 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 that just changes the landscape. You begin to see other things more clearly. This is a different nature of the covenant, you see. The old covenant of the law, thou shalt not. That was the primary focus, you shall not. Because it was intent, its, its intent was uh, to uh, hem in, to fence in, to keep in the aberrant uh, desires and affections of the flesh and keep them to a minimum, if possible, which it wasn't really possible, of course. God was really just defining these things uh, for those who would come later, for, for those who heard and, or, and for those who would come later and, uh, and establish a shadow of his righteousness. But what we have in Christ Jesus now is life and power in us in order to obtain these things, to take hold of that for which we are taken hold of then. And there, these things are declared and laid out for us, and so the exhortation then is to take hold. I appreciated the way the brother uh, expounded the idea of abundance and the largeness of these things beyond anything we can ask or imagine. Isn't that what the apostle says in Ephesians 3? Beyond anything we can ask or imagine. It will be that and it will be there. And so we must prepare. We must prepare ourselves. And we have everything that we need to make preparation. To make ourselves ready to cut ourselves loose from the world and from the flesh, from the things that have held us back, from the things that corrupted us in the past, and also from the things that, that would hold us back, like corrupt religion, a form without any power, and cut loose from those things, have nothing to do with those things, fully engage and take hold of what's provided for us in Christ Jesus. That's the exhortation. And it will open up, as we all know, it's doing that. We're seeing more of it all the time. It's opening up more and more for us all the time. We're seeing more and more than we've seen before. Those who want to see, those who want to have, he makes these things available to us. He opens the eyes of our heart. He sharpens our hearing to hear the voice speaking behind us. This is the way. Walk in it. He directs us in that way as we... Uh, Put our hand to the plow and continue to press in and take hold of these things. They're not a metaphor, as the brother aptly said. It's not a metaphor for, for uh, correctly or adequately managing your life while you're here so that you don't go off the deep end, so that you make good decisions, and so that you end up with a, 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 a stable, stable, solid personal life, financial life, career, and so forth and so on. Not so. That's not what these things are for. These are otherworldly things. These are out of the, the business world, the, the social climate, uh, the political environment, uh, whatever, however you can describe it from whatever angle you want to look at. These things don't have anything to do with that. It's part of the reason why Jesus' enemies couldn't compete with him. They couldn't deal with him. They'd attack him from this angle. They'd attack him from that angle. They'd, they'd try to pin him down about this, pin him down about that, chip away at him about this, that or the other, find some opening for their spears and the swords of their words. They could find nothing because he was from above and they were from of the earth. He was speaking of things outside of their comprehension. Those whose heads are nailed to the earth cannot comprehend these things. And what they can maybe catch a fleeting glimpse of 
they say, what's that? that we, what's that mean to me now? I need something now. This is some of the things they say. What's that mean to us now? We need some answers now. Not some, you know, the proverbial pie in the pie, or pie in the sky by and by. They don't want that. They don't want that at all. They want things fixed now. Even, even from a religious perspective, that's what many are looking for. Want my life fixed now. Give me some answers now. Tell me how to do it right now. And we'll worry about later then. Or God will take care of then. But we need something for right now. And they don't see how uh, walking in the light and the truth resolves a lot of now things because it just cuts you loose from them. <laughs> Cuts them loose and they fall to the ground. And you rise higher and higher as you seek to uh, fully engage the riches of His grace and glory. So this is what's made known to us. This is what's expounded by the apostles as they, uh, after they preached the gospel initially to the believers and then they would expound these things to them further and they would they would devote themselves, the hearers, would, the believers would devote themselves to the apostles' doctrine. This is what was expounded to them. The ever-growing nature of these, or the largeness, not, not the ever-growing nature, but our, our, our nature in them grows. But how large these things really are that we've come into. And as we make progress then, we see more and more and more of these things. This is what the uh, disciples saw of the Master, wasn't it? Every time they turned around, there was more. Every time he did something, it seems it was bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? Yeah. And we don't know what their verbal reactions were to Lazarus coming out of the tomb, do we? That's not recorded for us. I'll bet you there were some verbal, we know there were some verbal reactions from the disciples. I mean, they'd seen him raise the dead, but not somebody who'd been dead for four days, right out of the tomb. So there was always more. And of course, we know now what they didn't, that there was more coming. And when he left them, right up to the time that he left them, they questioned him about certain things. And he said, it's not for you to know the times and seasons or epochs the Father set by His own authority. That, those words right there tell you there's more to come. It's not, it's not for you to know when it is, but there's more to come. And they were confident of that, weren't they? They spoke that way. This is why they had the attitude that they were uh, glad to, uh, uh, they counted themselves worthy, glad to count themselves worthy of suffering shame for His name because they knew the glory that would follow. They knew that. They saw His glory before he ascended to the Father, they saw him ascend into it. Perhaps some of them even were watching when Brother Stephen was taken. We don't know if any of them were there or not, but they may have been watching from a distance. They may have been. They certainly heard of it. They certainly heard his words reported to them. The things that Stephen saw right there on the edge. The abundance of these things. So brethren, the exhortation is to prepare ourselves. To prepare ourselves to prepare ourselves. <laughs> to get ready. And, and it will be a continual increase of getting ready, that is. Always increasing. So that we'll have that we'll certainly have that abundant entrance. We'll not slow down, not rest, until after we've arrived. Well, we'll we, there will be a resting after we've arrived, but it'll be a different kind of rest, won't it? It won't be, re it won't be a recliner rest. Not at all. It'll be a different kind on a completely different level from a totally different perspective. So we're glad to hear these things. Uh, glad to think more thoroughly about this obtaining and not just abstaining. The, the reality is, as we're busy obtaining, you don't, you don't have time to even think much about abstaining. Why would you waste your time with that? I'm too busy 
to even be attracted to anything that I'd have to abstain from. We're just too busy. I don't have the time. And of course, you won't have the interest either. So, there's, there, there's not much to address along that line. There's no law against such things. I like that, I like that application. Against such things, there is no law. They just keep going on and on, more and more. Uh, the good provision that the Father has for those who love Him. The abundance. We go in and out and find abundance. Find pasture and drink. So, prepare yourselves, brethren. You have any other comments then? Good things, brother.